so the final segment and we are going to talk about how as a person trying to get into the legal industry from a barrister's list perspective how you can gain that independent exposure because i believe one challenge people find is how do i actually understand what is in this industry how do i understand the you know the pros and cons and understand how it goes so i'll christian you have to maybe talk a bit how maybe you gain exposure to the bar i sure how others you think yeah sure so i think um there's a general accepted wisdom that you meant to do many people just get work experience yeah that's obviously good it's actually very important for your applications however i think something people often miss out on is all right, so let's say I was in my undergrad year. Looking at people that are currently doing pupillage that have written a blog, for example, seeing what their insights are, they're much closer to me, so their experience at the bar is much more reflective of what's going on now, as opposed to a distant barrister in the future or that's gone before or something. But I think from people that are just a bit older, you can actually learn so much The people that have just entered the industry. Um, so I think that would be my, my very first step. But I think not to undermine kind of the, the mini pupillages as well, I think you get an excellent insight into what goes on in a chambers and then from there you can decide whether that chambers is one you, you like the look of, if that area of law is the, a type that you like the look of. And even just seeing how barristers conduct themselves in chambers, um, maybe when they're a bit more laid back and you see the, the real side of them, that energy is something that you can kind of translate into your own interviews a bit because you actually have a, a bit of a behind the scenes knowledge of what these barristers are like when they're not interviewing you. Mm -hmm. And of course exercise caution but it's helpful to know. Um, so just a few comments there, yeah, for that I think might, might help. Mm -hmm. So then, uh, I think, um, yeah, I'll just echo everything that you've said because all of this is entirely um, true. I kind of went about mine in a very roundabout way because I wanted to get exposure to the entire industry, which is not something that everybody wants to do, which is understandable. <laughs> but um, I didn't really know whether I, at the beginning anyway, whether I wanted to go into the city or whether I wanted to go down the criminal route. So I tried to get exposure to both. Um, and for me, the side has always been research, so um, just a quick people finding out what are the basic you know, differences, what really happens, what kind of cases come across each of these different areas, so what kind of work would you normally have um, in a criminal area versus in a corporate. Um, this is really weird, but law, law firm websites are an amazing way to start. Like, you go on there and they tell you everything under each of those departments roughly what kind of work they undertake yep. and once you know that and um, for me the next stage was getting to know the people linkedin's great so just connecting with people <laughs> like um from certain law firms that you're that you might be interested in mm -hmm. or even current students so you know certain university students or bloggers that are writing about these kind of topics so connecting with those and maybe reaching out dropping a message saying oh, hi just wondering um i'm interested in this and this would you be happy to meet up for a coffee or something or could you just talk me through some of these things mm. um attending networking events networking is an excellent way of getting information mm. like that nothing beats networking mm -hmm. you don't have to do the entire six weeks work experience <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's like a really nice short work <laughs> <laughs> i love efficiency so you just go in um and there are loads and loads of events especially at university and within um, certain law, law circles or signing up to these efforts that give you alerts, attending those, talking to people, asking all those burning questions that you might have, and it's also a great way to build up your network at the same time. So mm. I think that those would be my thoughts. Mm. <laughs> I'll just echo what both of you have said, to be honest. Um, I think there's so many tools out there now that we can use and utilise to our best ability, things like social media, LinkedIn, um, you can, there can be a barrister solicitor on there that you think seems interesting or is an area that you want to go into and you can just drop them a message and say hi, like I'd like to get coffee with you or something like that. Mm. Um, it's as simple as that, you know, people on there, obviously as exercise caution, mm. but people on there are very friendly and they're willing to help you. So. I'd say definitely go down the social media route and also network and get yourself out there. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and connect with people, meet, meet people in sort of a different environment that you'd meet them if you were in a chambers or a firm. Get to know them, get to know exactly what the area of law is like so you can make a conscious decision of you know, the, the industry that you're entering into. Uh, definitely, I would also echo that what has been said. I would say, um, particularly from a BME or less privileged background perspective, 
um, you may feel if I don't get a vacation scheme, if I don't get work placement, then life's tough because everyone else is getting it and I don't. And because you're always trying to find the way that is presented to you in order to get independent exposure to the industry, sometimes you feel like if it doesn't happen how I want it to, then it's like it's a failure. But one thing actually I do want to stress is in university, for example, I found that competitions could be a really great way as well to get exposure because that's a very practical way to not only gain the skills of what the trade might have, for example, in the bar, there's a lot of advocacy competitions and meeting, yeah. whereas there's also negotiation competitions, which I did as well in university. Yeah. And I felt like because the people judging you do it, it's like you can kind of learn how they do it in practice. So when someone says, so if you was in a negotiation, like how would you negotiate? Or if you want to move, like how would you be able to um, put up a good demonstration for your client? You've done it in a very simulated circumstance, but you've done it. Mm-hmm. And I feel maybe finding ways that are very practical, as well as exposing yourself through um, like chat networking events and social media, I think actually going and pretending to do the thing that you're going to do is kind of the best way because it's a bit like, oh, I'm actually a super I, I am a lawyer, yes, I'm advising you. <laughs> but I really want to put that out there as well because a lot of students, I don't know what's happened to you on Strive or something, but they do say, oh, um, I don't know how to get exposure to the industry because I I don't have a family of means and you're providing opportunity, but also I haven't got a work experience placement. and. I know we provide alternatives, but um, just for the students that may have that perspective, also from your perspective, Christian, how would you feel um, that can that kind of thought to yourself that it's not for me if you don't have exposure, it can be circumvented? So we get that a lot actually. So um, I was getting saying, I don't have a vaccine, I haven't been able to get my experience, and I've got nothing to do, what should I do? And I, I will say that getting a fixed work experience is not the only way of mm. getting um, experience. Like experience yeah. is really, really broad. Um, and every experience that you do is relevant, mm. and including your non-legal ones, but that's a separate topic. And in terms yeah. of the legal experience, as you said, competitions are a great way. Your, your societies and university, yeah. um, they're excellent for doing mm. various activities that give you that exposure. And also, um, we used to do one in Queen Mary, which was a negotiations competition. Oh, yeah. And literally, we just used to do, as you said, simulated negotiations, and it was very, very popular. Um, and if something like that does not exist in your society, in your university, set it up. Yeah. You know, um, it does take a bit of time, but take the initiative to set it up, and that's really how you get experience. It does not really have to be. Um, it only has to be a vaccine. It's not true. Even shagging a judge, sitting in an old baby court, or anything at all, it all it all adds up. It all it all just. And I think there's like so many different avenues that you can use to translate your own interest into something legal. Mm-hmm. So I remember in undergrad, I was really into writing. So there was a phase when I was writing kind of columns with Martin and Post, but I thought, well, actually, why don't I write something that's legal related? Mm-hmm. So I wrote about whether um, you should, it's right that you get a, after the sentence reduction if you plead guilty early to a, to a criminal offence. And that was something I was actually interested in as a topic, but actually it meant that, kind of unbeknownst to me at the time, when I was in interviews or doing things on my CV, I could say, actually, I've kind of written about this very topic that yeah. your chambers has written an article on as well or something. So, um, yeah, I think just make your own personal interests, find ways to make them legal as well. Um, yeah, and I guess it's another point as well, you don't always have to follow, as has been said, the, the very conventional route because there's kind of always someone that can do the conventional route better than you can. Maybe just <laughs> the circumstances or background they already come from, just do your route but find a way to tie in all the law into it. And sometimes I feel that can be the most efficient, but actually um, authentic way to, to get to where you want to get to, really. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Do you, do you? Oh, I actually just wanted to ask Christine, because I know mm-hmm. you started the, the podcast, the law podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it'd be great for you to talk about that. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's great. That's oh. such a great initiative. Thank you so much. So for that, it was, yeah, the law in 60 seconds. So it was a YouTube channel I set up and it was um, basically identified that whilst everybody understood the importance of the law, very few people took the time to learn it because they thought it would be too difficult or complicated or time consuming. But um, the, 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 the bad side of that was the fact that people were known fundamental legal rights. So that was the reason I did the videos. And I've just been really shocked at kind of the, um, the response I've had. So many people, all corners of the country have been talking to me about their legal problems. But what lets me realise actually on the, on the wider scale is that you know there, there are issues about access to justice. And I think there are things that 
you know, separately, do, do need to be addressed. But that's probably a conversation for <laughs> <laughs> that side of things. Yeah, that's resting. Yeah. That's, yeah. And the reason I asked is because that's, that's a clear example of, you know, using something that is important to you as an avenue to get into the legal industry or exposed to the legal industry because people will see that and they'll think, oh, this guy actually, you know, he cares, he's living now, mm -hmm. in his everyday life. Living That's out. what people want to see. <laughs> so. It's a great example of that. Yeah. Yeah. And I would, I would echo that obviously with on Chris's initiative with the law of 60 seconds mm -hmm. and with also on Sada's initiative with Strive Consultants, I think, you know, these these um, different platforms in order to provide people with information yeah. and guidance to get through is also another way to expose yourself to the industry because then you're understanding the challenges that exist yeah. in the industry so then you're almost a problem solver inside the firm so now all the chambers so yeah. you're almost kind of fixing things institutionally and I think you know being able to do that as well making something yourself is also another way to be able to get exposure and to wrap up the conversation guys I really would like you to really just provide your perspective on giving the people their support and how any last tips or advice to get into the legal industry from your perspective. So we'll start with you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> putting me on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> any last minute tips? Or I'd say just make sure that we really research, we really, really, <laughs> really research, but like, you know, I'm getting a little bit sometimes here. But um, I think the hardest part for, especially for our students, um, is always the application stage in terms of breaking in. Um, the students who always have great work experience, they've got good knowledge, it's always the issue of translating that knowledge in a way that makes sense. Um, and at the application stage, you know how all the graduate recruitment says tailor your application? Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, Dude. that is the number one, <laughs> it's the most fundamental tip ever. You just cannot deviate from it. You have to tailor it. And it's really long and it really takes a lot of time. But it's a tailoring that makes your application stand out. Because otherwise, you can just send the same application to 10 different firms and just change the name. <laughs> and, <laughs> but you know, because on the face of it, they all look the same. You know, like they, especially if you're going into maybe a corporate or especially, they all pretty much do the same kind of work. So. You know, you need to take the time out to be able to research the small differences, do the side-by-side -side comparison and talk about what those comparisons are. But that is what gets you over the application hurdle. And once you've made it past the applications, the interview, I just tend to find it's a much more of an easier process because at that stage, you're now known. You know, they know that you're good enough to be there. Um, and now, at the interview, you just have to prove that you deserve it, essentially. And I think that would be my point as well. <laughs> I, I completely agree with that. I think that's actually the most important thing. I think what I'd say is secondary things to that are um, firstly, don't put your life on pause. So whilst you're applying for all of these things, make sure that you're doing other things alongside that actually bring your happiness. And the reason I say that is because if you're not doing other things whilst you're applying, you'll always actually be at that same level. So your 2015 application will be the same as your 2017 or 2018. You have to be doing other things alongside. Um, and I think the, the second point is just to keep persevering. No application you, you write, no interview that you attend is ever wasted, even if it leads to a rejection. The information that you put in one application can be tailored and used for another. The experience you get, I think all of us would agree that every interview you go to, you get stronger, stronger, stronger. So part of the process actually is just going through the process of having interviews and knowing that your first one probably won't be great, but after you've done a few of them, you'll start getting into the flow of it. Um, so yeah, there'd be the additional two that add up to that, that key point. Um, yeah, that can help. Mm -hmm. I think again, just do research. There's so many initiatives out there that are for this purpose of helping people that may not necessarily have the exposure to the industry, get that exposure. There's things like scholarships, um, businesses that are actually there for that purpose. So definitely do some research into that. And also just be resilient, don't give up. It's hard, We've all, I'm sure all of us here have gone through you know, rejection, failure. Yeah, it's really hard, but if you know that it's for you and it's something that you're passionate about doing, then just keep going, you know, keep improving yourself, keep developing yourself, and you'll get there in the end. Definitely echo that. I'd give my advice, but I'm afraid about our time today, guys. Um, so, hope you enjoyed that conversation. It was really insightful. So many jewels thrown. Make sure you check out Strife Consultant's work. Make sure you check out The Law in 60 Seconds. Make sure you press the thumbs up too. I'm watching you guys. So <laughs> make sure you press the thumbs up, subscribe, all of that stuff. And we will see you soon. Bye. <laughs> Take care.